Hello, New Hope. Pastor Gary here. I hope you all are doing well in the midst of this coronavirus and now a little bit of release. Uh, please keep your uh, eye on announcements and perhaps additions to some of the announcements that have already went out regarding services, which we are going to begin meeting again in the building this coming Sunday, the 24th. Uh, but please, please, um, uh, even though they've released some of the restrictions on the coronavirus and, uh, and the fact that we've been homebound for two plus months and in seclusion, don't waste all of that effort and all of that hard work and all of the timing involved there and just uh, uh, in a moment of lapse, uh, go out and, and end up getting the virus somehow. So please just be careful. Have you ever noticed that sometimes it's the little things that are the most irritating, the little things that get us the most? I'm thinking about when I was a child, I used to love in the summertime to run through the grass with bare feet. I love the feel of the cool of the grass on my feet moisture from the dew as the evening set on and so forth. But as summer wore on toward autumn and the early stages of autumn, uh, running barefoot became a hazard. It became one of those things. You run into a patch of sand burrs that always stopped me. And now you got to hobble out of that patch of sand burrs and find a place to sit down and start peeling all those little critters out of the bottom of your feet. And now you're sticking your thumb and your fingers. And I, I always just hated that. So sometimes the little things that get us. Um, how about uh, you ever got a pebble in your shoe? Of course you have. And just at the wrong time, it happens to move while you're making a step. And sometimes it'll almost put you to the ground. Uh, so it's the little things that can get us. And so today I want to talk to you just briefly about a two-letter word that is one of the biggest words in Holy Writ, and that's the word if. The word if is used some 1,600 times in the King James Bible. I didn't buy, bother to count them. Uh, you can if you wish. Let me know. But uh, many, many times as it's written, it's a conditional uh, word. It's used as conditional. And it seems like the conditional part of it is almost always God-centered or man-centered. God-centered in that God says, if, and then man uh, is required to do some action or is required to be obedient to keep said event from happening or to bring on the blessings of God which have been promised. I think of uh, many of them. In 1 John 1, 9, it says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I believe that God means that when he says that. So there's no sins that are forgiven if they're not confessed. If you confess, it's a, it's a conditional word. Oftentimes we look as at uh, other scriptures. We look at one of our favorites is Second uh, Chronicles seven fourteen, and again it's a conditional statement. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Uh, did you know or have you read? that just one chapter before this, chapter 6 of Second Chronicles, Solomon is talking to God. It's a long prayer. And he's praying to God, and he said, what if your people uh, slip up? What if they start sinning? What if they do this? What if they do that? And, and uh, you send them out of the country. You take them away. And so, uh, and just prior to this event where Solomon is praying and seeking God's face, uh, he is dedicating the temple that they built uh, there in Jerusalem. Uh, Multi-millions of dollars worth of gold. It was, it was an awesome, awesome place. And God is telling Solomon, he appears to him by night, and he tells him, 
that uh, you must continue. Uh, you must be obedient. Don't do the things that the nations around you do. Love me. Keep my commandments. But the if my people part is conditional. And it was for Israel initially, but it fits us even today. So we should walk in repentance and we should walk uh, in the love of the Lord. So again, looking at this portion of scripture from 1 John, I want to read just a couple of verses. There are five ifs in uh, just five verses here. And they're, they're just awesome what they say. So look what, look what it says. If we say that we have fellowship with him, in other words, we're Christians, uh, but we walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. The next verse, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Again, a conditional statement, walking in the light as he is in the light then we will have fellowship. So we can say we're walking in the light, but if we don't walk in the light, we don't have fellowship with him. We're not a child of the king. Do you want to be a child of the king? You need to walk in the light. Walk in the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse six, if we say we have fellowship with him, and but yet we walk in darkness, we lie. And the truth is not in us. Verse 9, pardon me, that was verse 8. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So how about it, New Hope? How about it? From a very young child, I learned this verse of Scripture. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't you want to walk with God? Don't you want to be his child? Don't you want to have fellowship with the God of the ages, the God of creation, the God that spoke the worlds into existence, the God who sent his son, who died upon a cruel tree for you, don't you want to live the truth and live for him? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, bless your people today in Jesus' mighty name. Let your hand touch them, I pray. Speak to every heart that hears this video and watches this video. Love on your people, God, and protect them, I ask, in the mighty name of Jesus. Shalom. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace. Shalom. God bless. See you soon. And be careful out there.